My name is Pom Son. I'm uh, the lead singer of the band called Yang Ban. Yang Bans play music that's inspired by our trips to nature, mostly in the Korean countryside. We are, I guess, primarily a jam band. I have the other guys, there are five of us, and I'm the singer and the, the dancer, I guess. And the rest are brilliant instrumentalists, and I, I let them do whatever they want in the mountains or the rivers or by the beach and I record them, edit them, and turn them into a song. So I bring form to the chaos that's created by our trip to nature. It's hard to feel liberated when you're confined to these concrete jungles. Most of the boys have been a professional trained musicians session musicians, they do all these big names in the K-pop world, but uh, when their music is primarily for money and mass consumption, it tends to be very rigid. I take them to Chirisan or Jeju-do. Suddenly, you're given this bigger space and with it, uh, a bigger freedom. Uh, that's really essential for bands like us because we are strongly influenced by the psych psychedelic progressive bands from the 60s and 70s that was before computer were, was a major thing in uh, music production that's when you had to really be tuned into the moment for a rock and roll band to come back to that roots is very important but it's, it's somewhat hard for Korean bands because in Seoul our, our studio spaces are not as big not as spacious as it is in the West and more than anything the Korean sort of music industry, just like any Korean industry, is obsessed with competition and being perfect, being right on like on, on time. So just just being able to step away from that, it gives us a gateway to connect with the older Korean currents of uh, traditional Korean music. Uh, we use the word pungnyu, which happens to be the title of our new EP. Uh, Param Guahrum. Pungyo is a Chinese character, mean wind and flow. Yangbans are the old sort of Korean gentlemen who could be who could be a writer, but also someone who could be a great poet or a artist or whatnot. But the, the, the leisure class basically. Yangbans were super into Pungyo, wind and flow, and wind and flow was synonymous with music because music in the Korean setting was always performed out in the open. Uh, in the, in the midst of the wind and flow with animals and birds and insects singing along with these kayagum or you know, traditional instruments. For, for the longest time, for more than a thousand years in Korea, the way music was crafted and music was performed and music was appreciated was deeply connected with the natural environment. We're experimenting with that sort of the, the merge between the Western genre of rock and roll and the Korean sort of roots of wind and flow. from my bookshop and, and she told me she's gonna go to Henam three years ago and I was like I, rem I remember that I was like oh Tay must be in Henam right now so I called her and she connected me to uh, a local ashram in Henam apparently some uh, someone named Namu meaning tree in Korea after 10 years of staying in India going through her spiritual journey and whatnot and she came back open up a little ashram and she was waiting for artists, musicians to come there and do a little residency. And so I was introduced to her and I brought the young bands there. This was in spring. And we stayed there for a week, uh, loved it. And we came back to Seoul, to our studio in Hebangchon. And we try to record the songs, like to bring form to that sort of 
initial jam, but we just couldn't. We were like, fuck, this is like nothing like Hena. But we were inspired by Hena. We could not have written this if we weren't there. But now that we're trying to record this afterwards in Seoul, underground in the basement, like there's no way we can we can get the same vibe. So we just decided to bring all of our all of our stuff again back to Hena and record there. That's why we went down there again this, uh, this summer with Hak and uh, with several other friends of ours who wanted to, to check it out themselves. It sort of began as a sort of recording session but ended up being like a concert and a festival and a gathering, which was great. And when we do that, we, all, we not only connect with nature but also with the people there, locals living there who really appreciate what we, what we do there and vice versa and I think that's the beauty of being a band and especially a traveling band. We, had, we also had a concert in Henam with a uh, singer-songwriter named Harim. Uh, it was part of a different documentary and the premise was to have a carbon net zero concert. I'm not sure if it was actually carbon net zero, but I think the production crew did their best and I did my best to minimize the environmental impact of the concert. That's why we did it out in the open to minimize lighting and uh, during the day. Uh, it was fun, it was great. about competing, not about winning. But in Korea, everything is about winning. Everything is about competing. Once you get outside that box, outside that ma matrix, uh, then everything would come easy, I think, for, for you and for, for myself too. And that's what's happening to Young Bans right now. We are finally liberated from everything that the society, the Korean society has programmed into us. It took me two years to recover from two years of military. It's a trauma. It's, uh, it's what the state, the Republic of Korea and the United States of America has programmed into me. It literally trained me to kill. And it literally trained me to be a soldier, which means not to think outside the box, not to think creatively, to obey. Every Korean man has that in him. And you know how that can really fuck up a whole nation when it comes to uh, being artistic. So. If you are watching this and, and trying to be a artist or musician, or if you are an artist, a fellow artist, then yeah, let's try our best to unprogram ourselves.